Well, in a surprise move, Andrew Warren, the twice-elected Hillsborough State Attorney, who was suspended from office by the governor in 2022, said this week that he will run again for the job. Warren was suspended by the governor after he signed pledges vowing not to prosecute cases involving transgender health care or Florida's abortion law. That is what the legislature has enacted, and it's not for him to put himself above that and say that he is not going to enforce the laws. Warren's policies also discouraged prosecuting certain low-level nonviolent crimes and cases arising from police stopping people for incorrectly riding their bicycles. After his suspension, Warren sued to get his job back, and a federal court agreed that Warren's First Amendment rights had been violated by the governor. And an appellate court said a federal judge in Tallahassee has the right to restore Warren to the job as state attorney. However, so far, that judge has not acted. The courts found very clearly I had done nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong other than speak out on issues of public concern, which is my right both as a private citizen and especially my right and my obligation as a public official. Natasha, it's kind of late in the year. Why do you think Andrew Warren changed his mind? I think that he's ready for the people to speak again. I mean, I think that he believes in democracy and that's important. Um, and, you know, as was mentioned, um, the folks, you know, the people chose him twice um, already as state attorney. So why not allow them to make their voices heard loud and clear once again? I think that he believes in, you know, fair representation and making sure that, um, you know, folks have exactly the person that they need in those offices they elected. Um, it's not really a partisan issue. It's an issue about, you know, whether or not folks believe in the rule of law or the Constitution, and that sort of thing. And I think that, um, you know, Andrew Warren is a, is a man of the people, and that's why. And in some ways, do you think that this, this is going to be kind of a referendum on Governor DeSantis and his handling of his job for Hillsborough voters to say, yes, I approve of the way the governor is handling his job, or no, I disapprove, so I'm going to vote for Andrew Warren? I mean, I think in some ways it could be, um, you know, but I think we have to also remember that, you know, Governor DeSantis has done things that, that show that maybe he doesn't exactly believe in democracy. And I think that really this is more so um, leaving it to the people um, to decide for themselves who they want um, in charge of things that are local issues. Julia, you told me that you were at the press conference where the governor announced that Andrew Warren was being suspended. Why did you go and what did you think of the suspension? What do you think of his decision to run? Well, in a way, I understand, but at that point, when you are representing a position as his, you must abide by the law. And I support Governor DeSantis on this 100%. And I think when you hold a position where you have to follow certain, it, it, what you think personally, it's not what um, does the job. It is only what you are hired to do. Mm -hmm. uh, Craig, uh, Andrew Warren says all state prosecutors have discretion and they can decide how to enforce laws, which laws to enforce. Uh, Julia says, well, you've got to follow the law to the letter. Uh, Warren says, look, uh, I disagree with the laws against abortion, against uh, arresting kids who are riding the wrong way on bicycles and giving them tickets at least. What do you think about Warren's decision to, to run? Well, his decision, I think, is based on so many different variables that we have in this year's election. You've got a recreational marijuana question. You also have an abortion question that could drive more voters out who wouldn't otherwise vote. And based on the circumstances of his removal, could ultimately give him a boost. Another variable, who's the incumbent? We know who the incumbent is today. We don't know how the, uh, the litigation will ultimately work out and whether he gets reinstated. Where would that lead? All of this, I think, is telling Andrew Warren that he's got a shot at this thing, so why not give it another try, especially after the court ultimately agreed with him and disagreed with the assertion that he had done anything illegal, that you can say something, and as long as you don't act on it, you're not necessarily, or you're not breaking a law that it becomes a matter of free speech, and I think this is going to be one way or another a referendum on Governor DeSantis because he made Andrew Warren a central piece of his presentation.
presidential campaign uh, before he dropped out. So uh, among other things, that made Andrew Warren a household name in the world of at least state politics in Florida and even beyond. And so Warren recognizes that can work for him or against him to what extent just isn't clear because we've got a whole calculus equation that makes your head hurt of all the different factors that work into this. Of course, you know, you've got a presidential race at the top of the ticket and some unresolved trials of one of the presumed candidates. We just don't know which way any of this is going to go. Therefore, you don't know the turnout mix. It ultimately will be left to voters. This is all a big mystery to us. Warren's looking at that and saying, why not? All right, Susie Lopez, uh, who is in the office right now, appointed by the governor. She has $400,000 in campaign money that she can tap into. That's a lot of money. It's getting pretty late in the year. There's going to be a primary, too, in August for the Democrats. Is it too late? Well, we don't want to discount Ms. Strauss because we're presuming that he will get the nomination. So we may be jumping the gun on that. And when you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars, you're at an economic disadvantage. But also, what have we seen? Money doesn't always vote, people do. And because we have such an unusual confluence of circumstances approaching this November, I think that may neuter the impact of money. By the way, President Biden has a significant advantage in fundraising, but based on the circumstances, it may not help him as much as we've seen in prior cycles because the candidates are already so well known. What do we have in this race? <laughs> Two candidates, presumably, one's got to get through the primary, right. who were also very, very, very well known.